Um, so for me, service design is about um, instigating change and uh, thinking about something different, differently um, is all about getting to the right problem to eventually get to the right answer. Obviously change is always difficult, um, particularly for a large organisation. Um, and also when that's been around for a lot of years and they're very traditional. However, the desire for change uh, across the organisation, uh, transition um, and being open to new approaches, uh, 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 that is definitely there, they want to do that. You know, um, change is always painful, whether it's for a, uh, an organisation or with an individual, um, and that's just a fact of life. So uh, these are things that we just have to uh, mitigate against. It's not easy. It is difficult. Um, I think uh, you need buy-in from the top tier of management. Uh, you need persistence with your vision, you need a clear vision and persistence with that and you need a very clear uh, communications uh, strategy um, uh, as to how you um, push out how you're going to implement those changes across the organisation at all levels. Um, and then I think there's kind of patience to allow that to seep through an organisation. Um, so the people that actually make that organisation up can buy into that vision uh, that you've created in the first place. Um, diplomacy is crucial, um, you know, when you're uh, working with managers or frontline staff who are stressed out. Um, they just want to get their jobs done, so you have to be very careful about how you um, approach them. Uh, but the crucial thing uh, for me is uh, co-designing because co-designing um, allows uh, the people that are actually working within those organisations to uh, create the change themselves. If we can give them uh, service design tools and strategies, uh, we can work with them to build tools and services that work for them um, and for the users uh, that they may well be servicing in some way. Building trust and nurturing relationships is, I think, is crucial. Um, turning uh, gatekeepers to gate openers is a must. So my preference would be the latter, um, but that's not always easy um, or practical in most um, organisations. Uh, most organisations have years of structure, politics and processes woven into their fabric. Um, so you can really only introduce service design on a departmental level in those organisations. Um, I think the way for uh, service design to be ingrained into the DNA of a company, um, it would have to either sort of start with those um, values, processes and approaches, um, or it would have to be a small enough organisation to be able to flex um, to those uh, um, to service design uh, models. So one would be the uh, we've created this digital consent form. So consent is quite a big thing in our sector um, because we work with uh, vulnerable young people, uh, we work with families. So when we're doing uh, research um, with those groups we have to be very careful um, about how we use the data, um, how we approach the research, um, and we do have to uh, definitely have the consent of the participants. Um, before that was a very long-winded process where we would be juggling, people would be juggling uh, um, Word documents and cutting and pasting and changing and, you know, um, and there was no uh, no continuity to any of that process, but with uh, creating this uh, uh, digital consent form, we've managed to create something where we can spin up these consent forms very, very quickly, literally in a matter of probably 10 minutes or something. Um, and it's just all about asking the right questions um, to get the right answers, to be able to send that off to 
the service to be able to get that signed and sent back to us, you know, probably within about an hour. Um, it's uh, so, as I say, it's, it feels like it's a small thing, but it has a big impact. So we have uh, organisation defined KPIs um, that we can't really work to. These are reach, impact, uh, satisfaction and efficiency. Um, so how we relate service design and digital services as a whole to these KPIs. We're currently uh, trying to define that to greater granularity and to really understand what those mean to us. Um, increased participation with um, and from children and young people um, as well as giving them a stronger voice is key to meeting the impact KPI. Um, and, you know, in the past, I think that this has traditionally not played a big role in the way that um, the organisation has designed services, but we feel that uh, they are the primary users. So uh, uh, they need to help design the services that uh, they are going to use and are going to be useful to them. Um, I suppose depending upon the particular service we're designing for, um, uh, value could be measured in different ways. So it could be, for example, increased revenues through fundraising. Um, it could be uh, retaining contracts with uh, suppliers. Uh, it could be uh, satis uh, satisfied commissioners of children's services. So commissioners knowing that they've commissioned the right service uh, for a particular um, uh, group of uh, young people that they're trying to provide services for. Um, and I suppose um, more efficient operations in general for the um, staff that uh, do all the hard work within the organisation. Uh, obviously the tech industry is a standard bearer particularly when we're thinking about mobile device apps um, and the internet of everything. A primary design objective for tech is to make services invisible, um, very easy to use and interconnected. Um, you know, being able to control your heating or the heating in your house when you're on the train home from your mobile um, is a pretty cool thing to do, you know. Um, so that, I guess that's one area I would, I would think is leading um, uh, within service design. In terms of um, industries and areas that could benefit, um, I think definitely national and international transport industries. Um, I think everyone's suffered um, uh, uh, issues, particularly when travelling by trains. Um, there are big issues on roads at the moment with um, some rather interesting design solutions they put onto motorways um, in terms of um, hard shoulders. I mean, I would consider that service design. Um, uh, I recently had my water cut off for three days, so I would probably put water utilities into that area as well. Um, I think designing for government and local government services for citizens is a big and challenging area for service design and this is going to become more um, important um, in the sort of tur turbulent political times ahead. Um, but um, I think as well when it comes to formulating government policy, um, I think there's a lot of areas from social care to housing that could really benefit um, from service design. So I think the ability to develop better vision and strategy um, and understanding that the needs uh, and difficulties of users um, should really align with those of the organisation as a whole. You know, organisations um, should be based around users within them and the um, users that they uh, uh, provide services for or uh, market services too, 
Um, and I think uh, uh, a lot of those organisations have become have become fairly inward looking. Um, you know, uh, I think just turning those organisations from inward uh, looking uh, operations to seeing the benefits of uh, starting the design process from human needs rather than much more linear organisational needs that don't take into the account of users. Um, and I think, you know, um, innov innovative uh, ad adaptation to a changing social landscape is key. You know, nothing stays the same. People continually think in different ways and are developing uh, ways of being um, and I think that uh, it's crucial that those larger organisations if they want to stay relevant uh, they need to be plugged into that. <laughs>